Many skeptics have claimed that there's virtually no archaeological evidence to back up the historical claims of the Gospels. The real truth is that tremendous archaeological evidence has been discovered in Israel that proves the accuracy of the New Testament. Over a century ago, a French Christian archaeologist, Charles Clermont Guénaud, wrote a little-known report dated November 13, 1873, from Jerusalem to Palestine Exploration Fund. In his report, he told of this monumental discovery in a cave near Bethany in the Mount of Olives of a group of Jewish ossuaries, which are stone coffins, from the first century of the Christian era. To his great surprise, Claymark Gannot found that these ancient Jewish stone coffins contained the names of numerous individuals mentioned in the New Testament as members of the Jerusalem Church. Despite its importance, this report was not published in the newspapers of the day. As a result, it was virtually lost to history. The Gospel of John records the existence of one family of followers of Jesus in John 11. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. On the Mount of Olives, near the ancient town of Bethany that this verse refers to, the archaeologist was surprised to find names which corresponded with the names in the New Testament. Even more surprising were signs of the cross etched on several of the stone coffins. As Claremont Gannot further investigated the tomb, he found inscriptions such as the names of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary on different coffins. As Claremont Gannot continued to investigate the catacomb, he found additional inscriptions including the name Yeshua, which is Jesus, commemoratively inscribed on several of the ossuary. One coffin, also bearing cross marks on it, was inscribed with the name Shalom Zion, following daughter of Simon the priest. This catacomb on the Mount of Olives belonged apparently to one of the earliest families which joined the new religion of Christianity. In this group of sarcophagi, some of which have the Christian symbol and some which have not, we are, so to speak, witnessing the actual unfolding of Christianity. Personally, I think that many of the Hebrew-speaking people whose remains are contained in these ossuaries were among the first followers of Christ. The appearance of Christianity at the very gates of Jerusalem is, in my opinion, extraordinary and unprecedented. Somehow, the new Christian doctrine must have made its way into the Jewish system. The association of the sign of the cross with the name of Jesus, written in Hebrew, alone constitutes a valuable fact. The French archaeologists realized that there is a high degree of probability that these tombs belong to the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus the close friends of Jesus. Claremont Gannot wrote, By singular coincidence, which from the first struck me forcibly, these inscriptions, found close to the Bethany Road and very near the site of the village, contain nearly all the names of the personages in the Gospel scenes which belong to the place. Eleazar, which is Lazarus, Simon, Martha, a host of other coincidences occur at the site of all these most evangelical names. Several years later, very close by on the Mount of Olives, another archaeologist, P. Bugatti, found and excavated another catacomb holding 100 ossuary. Coins minted by Governor Varius Gratus from AD 16 proved that these tombs were used for burial of Christians before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Several of the coffins in the cave belonged to a family of priests buried in the first century. Based on the inscribed crosses and the name Jesus, Begate concluded that several of these priests were followers of Jesus Christ. Begate found many ossuaries containing the following names included on their sides together with the sign of the cross or name of Jesus. Jonathan, Joseph, Jarius, Judah, Matthias, Menahem, Salome, Simon, Zechariah. Many of these names appear in the New Testament records of the early church in Jerusalem. One ossuary contained the Greek inscription, Iota Chi Beta, which read, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. 
Without question, one of the most fascinating ossuaries was inscribed with crosses and the name Sapphira. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. This is a unique name which has not been found in any of the contemporary Jewish literature outside of the New Testament passages of Act 5.1. Luke recorded the death of this woman and her husband when they lied to God and the church. This very unique name eliminates all reasonable doubt that this was indeed the tomb of the early Christian. Now the most controversial find of all was a coffin bearing the unusual inscription, Simon Peter, son of Jonah. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. It is controversial because the Vatican claims Peter was the first pope and was buried in Rome. In spite of the fact they have absolutely no evidence for this legend, the Vatican has sought to suppress this important archaeological find simply to preserve their legend that Peter was the first pope. Yet right before our eyes lies the greatest proof that Peter was never a pope in Rome. Truly, if he had been, it certainly would have been written in the New Testament. Also, consider how improbable that a name with the three words, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, could refer to any other than St. Peter. Compounding this fully intact name is that the fact that the remains were found in a Christian burial ground and more yet of the first century, which is the very time in which Peter lived. For more information, please check the website, which will be linked over to the right. Now, on that site, there's an interview with a Franciscan monk who knew the archaeologist, Father P. Bugatti. He is reported to have confessed. Well, he confidently answered in a hushed voice, Father Bugatti told me personally that three years ago he went to Pope Pius XII in Rome and showed him the evidence that the Pope said to him, Well, we have to make some changes, but for the time being, keep this thing quiet. In awe, I also asked in a subdued voice, So the Pope really believes that those are the bones of St. Peter? Yes, was his answer. The documentary evidence is there. He could not help but believe.